So this next set of videos is going to cover maybe the most important thing that you need to understand in this class and in our current timeline, um, and that's global climate change. So this first part is going to look at the difference between weather and climate and how misunderstood that seems to be. So big concepts, we're covering this first one. Climate and weather are different things. Weather describes the day-to-day -day state of the atmosphere, and it refers to a local site. So if we're looking at the weather, we can see um, this weather prediction for precipitation, what's going to be happening in the atmosphere as far as um, deposition of water goes, right? And so we're looking at this map of Northern California and what that looks like. So this is a weather report. If we're to look at climate, we're going to be looking at long-term measurements for a larger area. So again, we're still looking at Northern California, but we have these sort of smoothed patterns across this area. And if we look at the timeline, that timeline has to be at least 30 years. So if you zoom in on this map here, we see that the time that this is averaged for is from 1976 to 2005. So if we're gonna say anything about climate, we need to be looking over a period of at least 30 years because weather as a day-to-day -day status fluctuates. Um, it might be rainy and cold one day and warm and dry the next day. And that doesn't mean that you know, the climate has changed between those two days. That's just how weather is. If we look at overall trends and smooth those over um, a larger area over a longer time, then we can say when we're experiencing real changes. So here we have this graph of California mean temperature. So if you look at the bottom, our um, x-axis is going to be time, and then our y-axis on the left there is temperature in Fahrenheit. And so we have a um, lighter black line, and that is kind of oscillating up and down, and that represents our actual weather measurements. And so each of those points on that line, those dots, represent measurements of the temperature at that particular time. So we can take those and we can plot them over a long period of at least 30 years. Here we have at least 100 years. Um, and we can see that the weather oscillates and changes a lot. And so it'd be hard to make um, any conclusions about what was happening between you know, 1960 and 1950. It would seem that there was this huge increase in temperature, but then 10 years later in 1970, it dropped back down again. So that those weather measurements don't really allow us any predictive power, but if we smooth those trends out, and that's what this darker line is here, is the average of those temperatures smoothed out over time. And we can use this as a trend line, and that allows us to make some sort of prediction or draw some sort of conclusion about what's actually happening in this environment over the course of time. As we can see with that smooth trend line that we have an overall average increase in temperature in California of let's see we're somewhere around 57 degrees here up to 59 degrees here so about two degrees Fahrenheit change. Unfortunately when people don't understand the difference between these concepts um, they can provide misinformation to people uh, particularly our people in leadership who don't understand how science works what science is, um, how to interpret data. And so here we have a senator, and this is from 2015, who, because it was really cold outside, it was a particularly cold winter, maybe um, some kind of record cold for that month, brings in a snowball and tosses it to the Senate president and says that, you know, climate isn't getting warmer because it's very cold outside, which, sure, it's not warmer that day, but that's weather as opposed to climate. So he's using weather as evidence that climate isn't changing. And you can't do that because they are two different things. In 2015, it was actually the warmest year on record that year, as was 2014, the year before that, and then 2016 beat that. So it was in this period of data-wise, proven hottest years on record. Um, and so uh, incredibly poor argument that fortunately a lot of people looked shamefully upon. Um, but that's out there. That's our leadership telling people that weather and climate are the same. So here we can look at that long-term data where we look at each year and the average temperature for that year. So this is Earth's 
average surface temperature um, and we have this line of zero here in the middle right so this is our zero line and that would be the average for all of the 20th century right so this zero represents all of our temperature measurements for the 20th century globally average so we can see it's not that we had um, a bunch of cold years before that it's that these years were all below the average because we are getting warming right so if we were to make an overall trend line on this we would see this overall increase right in warming and so that's why the zero is here it's not that these years were particularly cold if we were to look back further in time they would most likely be more consistent with these measurements right and so we're seeing more and more warm years and we're not dipping back below that average so instead of oscillating around a point we are continuing in a single direction more like a positive feedback loop than a negative feedback loop so if you go to this site uh, you can look at each month um, and you can also look year by year reports but this gives you our um, global area and data points from each of those areas so we get these um, rectangles uh, and it has the average surface temperature for that particular rectangle uh, for that month and so if you look you know in summer the temperatures might be distributed a little bit differently across the globe but just looking at month to month and little square to little square um, how the mean temperature in that area differs from the average so areas where it is um, more dark red or um, deeply red those are areas that it is much higher than the current average so you can look down here at the scale bar it's five degrees celsius is the bright red so we see Russia and a lot of Eastern Europe experiencing a much warmer February than normal. However, over here, we see Alaska and parts of Canada experiencing a much colder February than normal. And that is you know, data that we can put into these overall models of the overall globe over a long period of time. And you have to add all of those together because maybe if you live in Alaska, you don't believe that climate is getting warmer because it is a um, record cold February, right? So we have to look at big picture stuff when we're thinking about the Earth as a whole and when we're thinking about climate over time.